How to convert a telephone line into an internet line. Most of the old houses have phone lines embedded in their walls. Because we don't use them anymore, we can now convert these phone lines to better use, and that is expanding our internet reach hardwired. The first step is to investigate if the phone line in your home is capable of such function. The key is your telephone cable must contain four pairs of wires to make this happen. We'll show you how this is done properly and safely with our subject house that was built in 1950. Additionally, all of the materials and tools used in this project will be identified at the end of this video. Now we're going to find out if this phone jack has the telephone cable we are looking for. We will remove all these cords and cables attached to this receptacle so it can free the face plate. We would like to stress this out that whenever you're working on an electrical outlet like this, make sure that you turn off the circuit breaker that is connected to the electrical outlet. Now we can safely work on this receptacle. Remove all the small screws face plate two screws holding this combination port pull the hardware out to verify if the cable matches the requirement Another way to know if we have the right cable is to check on the telephone port if it says any labeling like CAT3, CAT5, CAT5E, CAT6, and CAT6E. These are all cables that can be internet lines. In our case, our telephone cable is CAT3. You also need to check the telephone cable that's coming into your house to see if it has four pairs of wires. So we're now at the basement. Cut our telephone cable and the number of wires matched. When you are 100% sure that your telephone line is a straight four pairs of wires, then you are ready for the next step. Remove the two screws off of the electrical outlet. Including the two screws off of the coaxial cable connectors. Using a pry tool, we disassemble each port attached to the faceplate by pressing down on this latch here. Each of the ports has its own latch hooked at the back of the faceplate. Push down the upper latch, pull the port away with the other hand. Repeat the same procedure on the lower port and release the faceplate. Take the telephone terminal, clear the protruding wires away to completely expose the gray telephone terminal cover. Now pry the cover off to expose the wires connected inside the telephone terminal. Remove the telephone port terminal by gently pulling the wires off of its individual connections. Before we connect our Ethernet terminal, you need to know what type of connection was used in your home network. There are two different types of connections that are being used today. The T568A and T568B 
marked on the side of this Ethernet terminal. Each differ in the arrangement of the colored pairs, so your choice of connection is determined by the need to match existing wires or jacks in your house to make a solid home network. So how do we identify the correct type of connection for our project? Here is a pack of modular plugs used on internet cables. When you buy one of these, it will show you the two different connection types you can make with these plugs. The T568A with its corresponding wire number and color, same as with T568B with its specific wire number and color arrangement. After taking note of the number and color arrangements on each type of connection, go to your router and remove your internet cable. Get your reference drawing and compare the wire arrangement with it. Wires in this plug are numbered from left to right. Wire number one is white with orange stripe. Number two is orange. Number three is white with green stripe. Number four is a solid blue. Next to that is white with blue stripe. The next is green then white with brown stripe and the eighth and last wire is brown. This arrangement is consistent with that of T568B connection. Otherwise, it is T568A connection. Looking at this Ethernet terminal port, and knowing that we will be using a T568B connection, we will just follow the upper label and then match the wire colors to the grooves. We can now go and connect the Ethernet port terminal at the receptacle. Prepare the Cat3 cable by untwisting and spreading the eight wires. Hold the Ethernet port with one hand and pry the cover off with the other. Place the telephone cable at the center of the Ethernet terminal. With that T568B wiring directions in mind, we now place each corresponding wire to its appropriate groove. The white-orange wire to the white-orange groove and using this locking key, Press down against the specific wire until it's securely placed in to the groove. You can wiggle the wire real quick to test if it is so. Now, do the rest of the wires using this method the orange wire to the orange groove, the white green wire to the white green groove. Then the green wire to the green groove, all on this side of this terminal. On the other side, the white brown wire to the white brown groove, then the brown wire to the brown groove. Next is the white blue wire to the white blue groove. And lastly, in this situation, the blue wire to the blue groove. Make sure you lock them in place for a solid connection using the key.
after you've done that, visually inspect if every wire is in their respective groove. When everything looks good, place the cover with a rounded end pointing towards our CAT3 cable. Press the cover till it clicks in. Cut the protruding wires. Then position the Ethernet port to make sure that it doesn't interfere with any other cables inside the receptacle. Now it's time for us to make an Ethernet plug connector at the end of this telephone cable. Expose the wires inside the telephone cable by snipping the end and locating the string embedded within it. Pull the string to tear through the protective sheath. Roll down the sheath and cut. Untwist the paired wires and spread them out for easier identification and arrangement to conform with our T568B connection standard. Hold the wires with one hand and arrange the wires in this manner. That's brown, brown white, green, blue white, blue, green white, orange, and orange white. Press the wires firmly and cut the wire squarely. Position your Ethernet plug in this manner. Insert the wires into the modular plug without disturbing its arrangement. Push it in firmly and securely. Get your crimper and insert the plug into its designated size. Squeeze the crimper firmly to secure the wires into the modular plug. Let's plug the cable to our main router and test if we have connectivity going to the wall jack. Using a patch cable connected to a computer we can see on the notification bar that there is no connectivity. But if we plug the cable, there you go, allow the computer to search connectivity. All right, so we have internet connection. Otherwise, you have to review your connections and unfortunately, redo your wirings. The last step we need to do to complete this project is to simply clean up and put things back in order. Attach the faceplate to the Ethernet ports. Reinstall the electrical outlet. The combination port. The coaxial cable connectors. Faceplate. and all electrical cables and wires safely secured. Final step is to turn the circuit breaker back on. Thank you for watching this video. If this helped you in any way, give it a thumbs up or share it to help your friend do the phone to internet line conversion. Subscribe to our channel for more DIY videos. Make sure you click the notification button. Now for the tools and materials used in this conversion. Hand drill. Flathead screwdriver bit and Phillips head screwdriver bit. Stanley flathead screwdriver. Cat5e jack. RJ45 modular plug, scissors, 
Ethernet jack key crimper tool. We appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day.